Right, folks, well, obviously that was a track from Reason Then, and joining me on the line is Mr Chris uh, Gingell himself to discuss, well, plans for the band, where the band have come from, where the band's going, etc. I mean, you guys know your, uh, my views on the band, so let's hear from the man himself. Welcome to Firebrand Rock Radio. Hello, Don. Nice to speak to you. How are you doing, mate? I'm doing okay. Well, I'll tell you what, it is great to finally actually get to chat to you after, um, must be a couple of years, I guess, since I uh, first... Uh, sort of heard of your you and uh, heard of obviously uh, the album um, yeah sure I mean um, and uh, <laughs> certainly I've got to say up front you know thank you so much for all your support in all that time because yeah it is it is a while um, I think it was probably before our album was released which was at the end of 2011 so we're probably going back to early 2011 maybe 2010 i'm not sure but thank you that far back (laughs) that's how you've got a better memory than i have (laughs) well you know when (laughs) when you're doing this you know it kind kind of clocks itself from what you were doing at whatever time and i can remember you know coming into contact with you a long time ago and uh you know you've always been a great supporter and spoken up for us so uh thanks ever so much for that well, I think, um, well, you know, and certainly uh, the uh, regular listeners to the uh, show know only too well that um, I only push and shout about stuff that I really genuinely like because I, I can't see the point otherwise. And it is an album which I, I hate to think how many times I've probably played uh, because it is just, a, I mean, even just for a first album, if we're going to go down that sort of a route of a constructive criticism, shall we say, is an absolutely superb album. Well, thank you very much. I mean, um, I, I'm so pleased when I speak to people like you who actually get it because um, it's, uh, you know, a fairly longish album. We went right in the deep end and it's an hour long. Um, it has 10 tracks on it and there's quite a bit of variety in there, really, when you start to listen to mm. it. I mean, there's a, a, a common theme, obviously. It's uh, quite a sort of uh, uh, a melodic but gutsy sound throughout but I mean there's a wide range of influences there and in this day when you know um, so much seems to be pigeonholed into one thing or another which to me always seem like very narrow bands um, we cross over quite a few of them so you know it's uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of a, a worrying thing to do but a good thing to do if you know what I'm saying because you know um, that's what we believe in and what we're happy doing but um it's always been a bit of a worry that we wouldn't get accepted, you know, into some of the more kind of narrow categories, you yeah. know, that there are out there. But um, fortunately, that hasn't been the case. And uh, certainly with yourself and other people, it's great to know that, you you know, you seem to understand what it is we're trying to get at. Well, I guess um, from sort as you say, probably people are sort of narrow banding bands and you know, some people say, oh, well, they're, they're a prog band or they're a hard yeah. rock band or they're a melodic band. Well, no, you're all three. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. That is exactly right. You know, we, we get called prog a lot, but I kind of take that as a big pat on the back. Um, and having sort of been a fan of, yeah, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm a self-confessed, you know, lifelong fan of uh, prog rock or prog metal, you know, um, Dream Theatre, Rush, other things, you know, Pink Floyd, Porcupine Tree, whatever. But I mean, uh, I've never really been sure about the term prog. And I'm wondering whether really what people mean is original, you know, because <laughs> it isn't like pigeonholeable, maybe it's... Um, unique. Um, now, I, d- I don't personally think that, you know, our sound is totally unique, but what it does do, as you say, is cross over a few different narrow bands there, you know, and uh, there's influences from progressive style music but also quite a lot from what i would call old school metal mm. and hard rock you know something like say uh early dio dio era rainbow as well um and maybe even iron maiden you know because we've got like riffs and catchy choruses you know um and as well you know 80s melodic rock i think you know there's there's quite a heavy influence from that um not so much Journey, but perhaps the bands that came up off the back of that that are a bit heavier, like yeah. White Sister and Doc and things like that, which mm. were more of a metal crossover. But, yeah, I mean, that that is our thing, you know, across the board. Um, it's all the stuff that's excited us over the years, and it's sort of feeding back into our sound now, you know. So thanks for calling in on. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, it's uh, if there's one uh, review which uh, absolutely got uh, it bang on the nail was obviously the review that you had in Fireworks magazine. I mean, um, uh, yeah, it was very pleasing that one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, we obviously had a, a, a spate of reviews when the album first came out, and uh, you know, they were from a lot of webzines. Um, and actually getting it reviewed in the major magazines like Fireworks for a start is actually quite difficult for someone in our position. But that one was uh, picked up on really well. And, uh, you know, the review was spot on. I mean, again, somebody had actually got it. And that's really pleasing, you know. Well, I guess uh, two of the sort of standout um, parts of the album is not only your guitar playing, but obviously Paul's vocal style. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, and that's, a, that's another thing I think that does set us apart. I mean, um, you know, it's very easy to have gone down the either the uh, kind of the stereotype, what I'd call an AOR vocal, you know, that's probably the spin-off of people like Bon Jovi and Brian Adams, you know, that kind of very melodic rock thing, or the macho man metal vocal, you know, the very much more gruff um, aggressive vocal, which Paul is neither. Um, he's got a, um, what I think of as a, as a quality tone and um, a feel, and uh, it gives a kind of more haunting feel to some of the music that, uh, you know, would be easy to have passed over and done something a little bit more in your face and obvious. Um, and that may or may not be to everybody's taste, I don't know, but, but for me writing the music and the kind of feel we're trying to get across in the mix of things it, it works very well and um, again it's very pleasing to get the comments back that we do about Paul's vocals well uh, I say where you're saying uh, obviously the phrase haunting I would say the actual um, track the darkest star itself is got a very haunting undertone to it yeah I mean it's uh, a slow track um, one of my small bugbears that, that I have is that I think sometimes the slower tracks on the album don't get picked up on as quick um, maybe for obvious reasons you know, I mean that one in particular is quite long and it's more of an atmospheric feel if you like, um, but it's still quite dark and quite thick mm. and heavy you know and um, when you listen to it the actual theme of it is not um, certainly not soft really so yeah I mean Again, getting that atmosphere and the um, certainly the vocal style and the way it's produced in the song is, is something that's been really important, you know, and uh, Paul's done a great job on that, and uh, it does get picked up on. Um, but it's all part of, you know, uh, the production and mixing the right tones in, you know, to get, to get a good feel to it. And uh, certainly, you know, um, again, I'm glad you've mentioned that because... Uh, uh, people do pick up on perhaps the shorter more abrupt and, and more catchy songs if you like but um another side of our sound does relate to maybe pink floyd porcupine tree as i've said before yeah. you know a more progressive rock uh an atmospheric side so we like to keep that in our arsenal if you like so <laughs> um thanks for mentioning it well i mean i would say that tracks like the darkest on the album um Maybe they don't get picked up so much by some people is because they are, um, shall, shall we say, they, they have the same disease as uh, us presenters have, this 15-second um, um, listen to a track before jumping on yeah. to the next one, where a track like The Darkest Star, for example, is one of those tracks you just have to sit back and actually listen to properly. And then yeah, suddenly... I mean, yeah, I like to think that you can reproduce stuff that is... Um in the grower category then, you yeah. know, for one of a better oh, absolutely. description. You know, because um, it, it's easy to, I mean, I do it myself, I very often sit in front of, uh, you know, the rock channels on television and see something and, and the whole mix of the visual and the song is be an instant sort of hit with you and you think, oh, well, that's amazing. And then go and listen to it again and mm, maybe not, <laughs> you know, <laughs> after the initial hit. Um, and uh, I, I, I'd like to think that perhaps, you know, we 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 do some stuff that obviously grabs people, you know, by the collar straight away. But but we do produce uh, music that is more of a kind of a grower. And uh, certainly, I think with 
some of the longer, slower tracks on the album, that has been the case, you know. Um, and we have some good comments back from people, you know, saying that, you know, they like it more and more the, the more they listen to it. So, um, again, you know, um, very pleasing uh, and nice to think that people will spend the time, you know, to actually live with it and, and find that from it. Well, one thing um, I must bring up is um, the production on the album. Now, yeah. um, it's obviously one thing that can really make or break uh, an album, apart from, yeah. obviously, uh, the, the singing itself, which obviously I've already touched on, because as I've said on many an interview, many occasion, if I don't like the vocals, then it doesn't matter how good the rest of the album is, it's it's dead in the water. Yeah, 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 no, I guess. But you. I could say... Uh, Almost the same, but not quite, regarding the production as well, because the production can make and break an album. I mean, yeah. obviously you had um, a very famous gentleman involved in one particular track, um, yep. which we'll touch on in a minute. But who did the production for the rest of the album? Well, it was mainly myself and, and Paul, the vocalist. Um, I mean, we really record, produce, and engineer everything ourselves. Um many many reasons for that but um a strong advantage of it is it, it it stays um very much within the mindset of what we're trying to produce if if we work that way um right. and you know i mean it, it comes down to textures sounds you know the match of what keyboard sounds we use to guitars and vocals and trying to get everything to kind of um, produce a spectrum then that that is is good to the ear and also kind of reflects the feel of the music. Um, somebody described it in a review some while ago as um, I think they said it was miserable yet uplifting, <laughs> which <laughs> I find really amusing and quite pleasing because. Well, in a way, that's it. It's, um, we've tried to produce some, you know, obviously a, a lot of melodic music, but it, it's, I like to think it's got a darker side to it. And, and uh, the production does play a large part in that, you know, um, rather than a very sharp, um, sort of jagged sound or something. So, that, I mean, keyboards as well add a lot of atmosphere, you know. So um, a, lot, a lot of thought has gone into that. And we do spend, you know, we have the luxury of spending quite a bit of time on mixing and producing things to get that kind of atmosphere that we want. So, yeah, it's us, you know, mainly. So how did, um, obviously, the, the track that uh, I played just before um, we started having this chat was uh, obviously the track Rise, which was produced by none other than Bo Hill. So how did uh, he get involved with the band? Well, a bit of an incredible incident. I mean, having been a, <laughs> an admirer of his work for so many years and owning so many of his albums, you know, um, I remember, you know, having the early Rat albums, you know, uh, Winger, and, and listening to those and thinking, you know, they, at the time, they just sounded amazing, you know, and, and there was this guy, Bo Hill, you know, sounds very showbiz and I think, oh, it's a big Hollywood bod, you know, and um, obviously years and years go by and here we are writing music and, um, uh, uh, some while ago, you know, posting things on the internet, and uh, out of the blue, one day we're contacted <laughs> by email by none other than Bo himself, saying that he'd listened to our music and um, could see something in it. Uh, were we interested, perhaps, in working with him on some tracks? Um, and of course. You know, first of all, my, my first reaction was, well, this is a fake. <laughs> um, as it turned out, after a bit of communication, it certainly wasn't. And uh, we agreed to actually do um, a demo track, if you like. And uh, we literally communicated with him transatlantic. He took our sound files that we'd recorded ourselves right. and uh, came up with this mix, which... Uh, well, I'm still over the moon with, really. I mean, um, you know, it, it doesn't sound dissimilar to the rest of the stuff, I don't think. Um, no. He's kept the feel of what we do and certainly understood what we were after, but it's still got some of those Bow Hill hallmarks to it that I associate with some of these great albums that I own that he produced, you know, and I think he's 
got something like 50 million albums to his credit or something <laughs> like that. Um, and into the bargain, he was a great guy, you know, um, and a really good, fun bloke to work with, you know. Strange, he seemed to share that same sense of humour that a lot of musicians and music people have, and uh, we got on like a house on fire. We're still in occasional contact now, you know. Um, and one day, certainly like to go back and maybe work with him again, you know, do some more. But um, hopefully things will develop to the point we could think about that in the future. But uh, for now, it'll be on the wish list. Well, I'll say, it's, um, I've heard those sort of things about uh, Bo before, because um, he also um, did a production uh, job on a, a track by another band, which uh, I'm rather fond of, which people will be aware of, which is, of course, uh, Phrase Gang. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, he did that. He worked on the Jack Hammer, which was the bonus track, which they added onto the first album. Yes, so yes. he he has a bit of a habit of um, of going around and just uh, deciding to sort of almost help and tweak bands along, which um, you, you've got to admire the guy for because he could just turn around, as he said, and sit on his laurels and go, "Well, you know, this is me, aren't I great and wonderful?" And, and that's the end of the matter. Yeah, I mean, um, that was, I mean, certainly a feeling that I got from you know um speaking to him quite a lot was that he you know he he was sort of looking at uh, what's out there and um realizing what the situation is for people in our position you know i mean he knows that you know there's bands like us that perhaps 20 years ago might have been finding record company advances relatively easily um that now don't have you know that kind of launch pad you know um mm. And we're working off our own back, and, and obviously that you know, I think we've gone a certain part of the distance in uh, being able to produce and record our own music and put it out there in a format where it can catch people's ear. Um, and it's kind of his little way of um, giving you a foot up. I mean, certainly he did a fair bit to sort of promote the track and us, yeah. you know, for some time after we finished it and. Uh, I, I think it still, you know, still gets quite a lot of attention. Um, now. Well, I guess it um, puts almost a sort of um, some validity to the album when when people see that uh, that particular name on it in the credits. Yeah, I mean, very much so. And I mean, again, for bands in our position, it's a big thing. I mean, um, again, uh, years ago, we'd have been signed to a record label. You're almost put through a filtering process and then presented to the public where you're endorsed by somebody who yeah. is seen as professional. You know, um, the difference is nowadays that there's a lot of great musicians out there, but you have to go around telling people yourself, mm. look, you know, we think we're good. Have a listen to us. And a lot of people are going to go, yeah, 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 everyone says they're good, you know. Um, so having somebody's name like that bias is is a big thing, you know. Um, and uh, I, I think it certainly, in certain departments anyway, gets gets us a little bit of notice and people raise an eyebrow and say, well, you know, let's perhaps give that a little bit more of a shot because that has got a stamp on it of some kind. So, yeah, yeah, it's worth, worth quite a lot, I think. Well, going forward, obviously, um, you've just signed with uh, Skyfire PR, which is obviously the sister company to Firebrand. That's um, correct, yep. So what's brought you into um, now sort of signing on to a PR company? Uh, what are you sort of uh, looking to achieve? Are you, uh, you're obviously working on a new EP, etc. Um, yes, yes. I mean, we've been demoing music for some time now. Um, I mean, certainly we've kind of gotten the belief that you know, quality is really, really important, and we do spend quite a bit of time working up tracks, you know, um, and try not to put out anything that's weak at all. Um, but we're at the point now where we're really looking to kind of cross the next bridge, so to speak. Um, and uh, we've been very, very patient, <laughs> maybe a little shy <laughs> yeah. in uh, jumping in with anyone, you know, up to this point. But, um, but that's understandable. Yeah, I mean, Skyfire. Uh, have come along and um, you know created this kind of one-stop shop situation, which, looking at it from our perspective, is very, very attractive. You know, um, and um, it's very reasonable as well. And we thought, you know, you know, this is the right time we can get on board. Um, also, behind the scenes, um, you know, obviously we have a, a band here, which is now at a point where we have a significant amount of material really um one album out there um still hasn't reached enough people but 
you know, that's something else that's still being worked on. Um, and the potential to produce another one as a follow-up, which I think has developed again a little bit from the first album. Um, we've had a couple of lineup changes in the band, uh, yeah. namely um, John Townsend has come in on drums and percussion, who is uh, an absolutely top-flight drummer. Um, completely what I would think of as... Um, a strong musician, you know, behind the kit who adds an extra dimension to what we do. Um, and also we've had um, a replacement keyboard player come in from just before we released the last album who is um, um, a trained uh, classical pianist. He, he was uh, <laughs> trained as a concert pianist when he was a kid, uh, Gilles Hurd, um, who again is an astronomical player and has added another sort of raft of, you know, dimension to what we do. So... We're quite eager now to actually give ourselves a bit of a, uh, again, a springboard, you know, to, to fire this out there to the public, both through recordings and live. So um, jumping in with Skyfire right now is absolutely perfect for us, just the right time. And um, we're looking forward to a good relationship with them, and we think it'll, you know, help us an awful lot. So um, long may it... Uh, you know, carry on, and uh, we're hoping for great things this year. Um, obviously, you're involved um, and signed with uh, Alien Nation. Um, yes, that's I must give them a shout out because I, I mean, I'm a big fan of um, well, not only the label, but obviously the the other work that uh, that Johnny does himself with his own bands. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's absolutely top notch. I mean, again, I think this was another reason that we, um, you know, signed up to Alien Nation was that. Um, what they represent is musicianship also on a progressive side mm. um more so than we are um but obviously dead end space as uh, johnny's band are called now which previously the johnny engstrom band um of course. Are, um uh, a high quality outfit you know um and i understand uh, that you know they've been working on promoting their most recent album recently and you know we've have this plan to try to expand between us, you know, the profile of alienation. Um, and uh, we have a very good, I would call it an artist's relationship there, um, which is agreeable to all of us, and we're all very happy. So, yeah, <laughs> certainly, um, you know, it's, it's been a, a great help to us having somebody as a label that's that sympathetic to the musicians you know they don't they don't pressure us to do anything in particular or in any time it's all about getting things right and doing things of quality so well because that's probably helps because obviously you know johnny is not a he's not a suit sitting behind a desk in an office you know he's that's a working right, yeah. musician who um for those of you unaware uh, we're talking about johnny engstrom as as chris said um obviously it was a johnny engstrom band obviously they were changed down to dead end space which are a, a progressive band but i mean it's it's again it's um if we just talk about them for a second the, the layers of uh Cool. How, how can how you put it? It is prog, but it, it's another one which is prog, but it isn't prog. It's easy yeah, to easy right. to push um, all the stuff that Johnny's into into prog. But I think it's just it's just he is just an accomplished musician who understands where other musicians are coming from. Hence, obviously, such a good relationship he has with you guys. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's some parallels, but we kind of um, uh, complete the spectrum, if you know what I mean. I mean, we're a little bit more kind of perhaps direct and commercially orientated yeah. than than his music so true the, the two things complement themselves rather than both being you know heavily on one side of the fence so to speak so yeah i mean um this was you know i think uh, johnny and us um uh, myself you know what we understood and why we formed the relationship in the first place so yeah all happy Obviously, you've got a gig coming up soon. Uh, I guess. Yeah. I guess is a this is a golden opportunity for, to get for you to give it like a massive plug, as it were. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've got a couple of shows lined up for the next couple of months. Um, we've got um, a fantastic local venue, um, which is literally a stone's throw from where we rehearse. I mean, we're in in Gloucestershire here, in the middle of England, as you know. Yeah. And. Um, we we've got a, a fantastic rehearsal spot that is virtually our own personal place, which is uh, out in the countryside, so that we don't, you know, <laughs> uh, offend neighbours and things. Um, and uh, just up the road, there's a there's a town called Evesham, and 
a very good friend of ours runs a music venue pub in Evesham called The Swan. Um, and every time that we're getting ready to go out and do things, we always play The Swan. It's uh, a great atmosphere, you know, we pack the place out, um, always have a great night. Um, and we're playing there on Saturday, March the 8th um, in the evening. So anybody in the local area, of course, come over and see us. And uh, we take our full rig in there everything um which is quite funny really but um <laughs> it, it gives us a perfect chance to road test everything you know and uh, uh we really do um give it give it our all so it's an up close and personal kind of arrangement you can come and say hi to us whatever you know um so that's our first show and uh that's kind of in preparation for a support we're doing about a month later which is on sunday the 13th of april uh, the Robin 2 in Bilston supporting um, Curved Air. Okay. Who I'm sure is a name that, that rings a bell to you, which is um, mm. a classic British prog outfit. So um, we're hoping that's going to be a good night for us as well. So, yeah, we have those two shows lined up at the moment, and we're awaiting confirmation on more for the summer. So anybody that wants to come and visit us on uh, Facebook, um, or our website, we'll probably see some gig dates lining up around the country for later in the year as well. So that's good. I mean, it's good to see you out gigging because obviously you haven't done much in the way of, um, of sort of traipsing around the countryside, um, a a k a with a transit van. Um, so it's no. something that you obviously want to do more of now. Yeah, well, it's, it's pretty difficult for someone in our position because um, we're quite a big setup. Um, you know, we've got a, a drummer with a <laughs> a large drum kit. Yes, uh, I have seen the photos. Rig, uh, <laughs> you know, everything. So, you know, I mean, um, uh, pub gigs and things are, are, are kind of difficult. Uh, and obviously financially as well, it's very hard to, to get well, up and down. Um, so we've kind of took the approach that we will try and hit the right spots. Maybe not so often, but we'll hit the right spots. So this is our big plan for the year this year. Um, and as I've said, you know, we've we've had a couple of lineup changes as well, which has tended to slow us down a little bit. Um, but we've had a really good set of lineup now for about the last nine months. And, right. Um, you know, it certainly is, um, in my view, you know, a top quality act live as well. Um, you know, it's, it's far exceeds anything else I've I've done in the past. That's for sure. So, you know, and and that was on a on a pro level. So. You know, very, very happy and can't really wait to take it out there now. Um, so we're looking for, you know, as many good, valid opportunities as we can get from now on, you know. Well, Chris, like I say, it's been an absolute pleasure finally getting you on the show. Um, as you know, I'm a sucker for playing anything that t anything new you release anyway, and, ha and always will do. So I am already um, highly anticipating the EP when it comes out. I well, will that's wonderful. Well, thank undoubtedly, you very much thanks for having me on. It's that's been a right. pleasure speaking to you, sir. I'll undoubtedly see you play live at some point. We will, we will uh, cross paths somehow. I mean, it's difficult for everybody travelling around, etc. But I'm sure at some point we will meet up. Um, yes, well, I said, you know, we plan to get out there, you know, um, really step it up now. So um, I'm sure, and uh, you know, that we'll cross paths very soon, mate. Thank you very much. Well, give my regards to the rest of the guys, and I wish you every success going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, Chris. Cheers. Bye.